Okay, everybody, welcome again to the Equity Mates studio. If my voice is familiar, it's because I'm one of the hosts of Talk Money to Me, uh, another podcast here. So I'm super pumped to be listening to this session by Mary because climate change is arguably one of the biggest trends that we all face as investors. And obviously, I think there's a lot of ESG investors in this uh, room right now. So this is super exciting because we're going to hear from Mary, the expert, in exactly what companies do good and how they do it well and how you can invest in the global structural change. Our expert today is Mary Manning, the Portfolio Manager at Alphany Investment Management. Now, disclaimer, here it comes, I'll be real quick. Everything that Mary's gonna teach us today is obviously for educational and entertainment purposes only, and any advice should be considered general advice only. Don't take it as personal advice. Chat to your financial advisor if you have one, um, and consider your personal circumstances, needs, and objectives. Equitymates uh, Media operates under the Australian Financial Services Licence. Who can recite it? Here we go, 540697. All the boring stuff is now done. So Mary, welcome to the stage. Over to you. Great, thank you so much for having me. Hey, good afternoon everyone. Thank you so much for coming to this session. Uh, my name is Mary, I'm a Portfolio Manager at Alfinity Investment Management and I co-run the Alfinity Sustainable Fund. So today I'm going to talk to you about sustainability and why it's a mega trend for the 21st century. So to start off, I want to talk about three numbers and ask you three questions. So the three numbers are 30, 99 and 83. Does anyone know what these three numbers stand for? You're never going to guess, so I'll just tell you. The 30 stands for 30 trillion. So 30 trillion dollars is the amount of money that's going to be transferred from one generation to the next between now and 2050. That is an enormous amount of money. It is the single biggest intergenerational transfer of wealth in the history of the world. The 99 stands for 99%. The Morgan Stanley Sustainable Institute recently did a survey where they found that 99% of investors aged 25 to 38 wanted to invest sustainably. So if you multiply those two numbers through, this is not hard math, you realize that there's almost $30 trillion that's going to be transferred from one generation to the next, and that next generation cares deeply about sustainable investing. So that's basically the, the title of this. That is the mega trend that you are having a massive shift and that all of this money wants to be invested in a way that's sustainable and that aligns with people's personal value systems. So what is the last number? What is that 83? I put it in red for a reason because it was actually a bit of a depressing number and it was a number that I didn't get. So if anyone has an answer, you can come talk to me after. But 83% was the percentage of millennials that said that they thought there was a, um, a trade-off between investing sustainably and investing for performance. And they thought, it's either one or the other, I can't have both. And I thought that that was really surprising. So what the rest of the presentation is talking about three different questions. And when you leave this tent, I want you to have the three answers for yourself. So the first question is, do you care about sustainable investing? We're going to spend very little time on that because I'm guessing by the nature of the fact that you're here, you probably do. The second question is, how do you define sustainability? Because as Candace was saying at the beginning, there's, there's lots of, of different things. Sometimes sustainability is ESG. Sometimes it's just companies with good governance. Sometimes it's climate change. Sometimes it's plastic pollution. Sometimes it's modern slavery. There's lots of different aspects of sustainability. And so you need to figure out for yourself, what does sustainability mean? I'm going to show you how Affinity defines it, but um, that's, that's one way. And I'm a bit biased. I think it's the best way. But um, I want you to figure that out for yourself. And then lastly, I want us to discuss that 83% number. Do you think that there needs to be a trade-off between investing sustainably and investing in a way that has good performance? It's my view that it's not. You just need to have a very disciplined investment process. Um, but that's where I'm going to take you in the next 20 minutes. So let's get started. These are the sustainable development goals. You guys have probably all, all seen them before. But when Alfinity thinks about what is sustainability, this is how we define it. Uh, the Sustainable Development Goals are a set of 17 interlocking goals that have been ratified by the UN and they've been adopted by most countries in the world. So you do have kind of a consensus, it's one of the few things in the world that people can actually agree on, that these are a set of goals that will together will make the world a better place. So the important thing from a sustainable uh, investment perspective is that how you define the sustainable universe has a really important impact on what your portfolio looks like and therefore what the outcomes are from a performance perspective. So at Alfinity, any stock that goes into our portfolio from the sustainable side has to have positive net revenue alignment with at least one of these sustainable development goals. 
And you can see that the SDGs are not just about the environment. This is a very important point. They are a broad set of goals, and they define sustainability in a very broad way. So you have um, goals one to five and 10, which are about our social goals, no poverty, no hunger, good health, education, gender equality, and income inequality. Those are social goals. Then you have a whole bunch of other goals that are about the environment. SDG six, which is about water, seven, which is clean energy, 13, climate change, and 14 and 15, which are life on land and life on water. Then you have some other goals that are more about community. So you can see that if you're constructing a portfolio, having that breadth of opportunity in terms of how you define sustainability can be very, very important. So this is how we do it at, at Alfinity, and I, I encourage you to question your own aspect of sustainability and how you want to align your personal value system with how you invest. So next I'm going to give you some examples of the stocks that we own in the portfolio and how they align to the sustainable development goals. So Bryce and Ren told me you have to use stock examples because <laughs> this is the main thing that people want to get out of the session. So I'm going to give you a lot of good examples about stocks that we're invested in. We think that these are the stocks for tomorrow. Okay, so that's 78%. Do you remember the numbers at the beginning? The 30, the 99, and the 83? In that Morgan Stanley survey, 78% of respondents said they were interested in investing in recycling and circular economy stocks. So that's very high. That's not just people saying, I want to invest in climate change. That's people taking a much broader view of the environmental goals and the SDGs. So two companies that we really like in this area are Waste Connections and Advanced Drainage. Waste Connections is the third largest waste company in, the, in North America. Um, it's kind of what the name says. It picks up the waste, it recycles the waste, it incinerates the waste, and it recycles it into different kinds of products. But not only is it a very good um, you know, sustainability story, it aligns with SDG 9, which is about innovation and infrastructure, and SDG 11, which is about uh, sustainable communities, but it's also an amazing investment. This is a high growth company with very defensive quality, so it's performed extremely well in this kind of market environment. It has very strong management. It's a mid cap, so you don't have any liquidity issues, and it's very attractively valued. So this is a theme that's sort of running through this presentation. These are amazing sustainable stories. These are the stocks of tomorrow that you want to be invested in, but they are also very good investments. Advanced drainage is another example. Advanced drainage makes um, pipes and septic systems, which isn't a very cool, sexy thing to talk about at a conference, but that's what it does. And because it makes these plastic pipes, it's also the largest plastic recycler in all of America, because they take the old pipes and they recycle them and they make them into new pipes. So again, um, it aligns with SDGs 9, 11, and 12. That's why it's in our portfolio. And it's also an amazing investment with a very strong investment, er, investment case based on earnings leadership and attractive valuation. So those are some examples for SDGs 9, 11, and 12. This next one is some other examples that we really like and that are in the portfolio. Danaher, Mercado Libre, and Nextera. Those numbers at the top are, are also from the Morgan Stanley survey. You can see that 82% of respondents said that they thought that healthcare and good health was an important part of a sustainable future. And actually, if you look at the way that number has changed over time, you can imagine that after COVID, that number went way up because people realized you can, you can address these sort of single issues within sustainability, but if you have a pandemic every few years or if you have a, a world that doesn't have um, a good public health system, that's not going to be very sustainable. The 89, that was the number of people in a survey who said that they thought that their investments could alleviate poverty and help um, small businesses. We'll talk about Mercado Libre in that context. And then 88 was the percentage that obviously care about climate change, and that is not surprising. So I'll walk you through these through three stocks, how they align with the SDGs, and why we think it's a very good investment case. So Danaher is a $167 billion market cap company. How many of you have heard of it before? Yeah, just a handful, right? But this is a mega cap company. It's one of the leading um, sustainable healthcare and sustainable technology and innovative country, companies in the world. They do a lot of things about genomics and um, they also do a lot of things uh, with respect to environmental tools and environmental sensitivity. It's an amazing stock. It's trading at a very attractive valuation, and it's been in our portfolio for a long time. So this is a good example on SDG3, how it um, you know, adds diversity to a portfolio because it's healthcare and healthcare related. Mercado Libre is one of my favorite stocks in the portfolio right now. I often go on Bryce and Wren's um, a podcast, and, and emerging markets always come up because I think it's a fantastic place to invest and there's a lot of really interesting sustainable stories there. Mercado Libre, as many of you know, is um, the biggest fintech and e-commerce company in Latin America. So they have 443 million users. So just think about that in the context of like how big Australia is and then how many users they have. 
It's also the biggest fintech company in, in um, Latin America. They have two separate companies, Mercado Pago, which means like market pay in, in Spanish, and Mercado Credito, which is their, their lending. They do micro loans. Some of the loans that they give out are less than $400. And they have done an amazing job in terms of connecting those small merchants in Latin America and extending credit to people who would otherwise be outside the financial system. So in our analysis, it aligns to SDG 1, which is no poverty, and SDG 10, which is about economic inequality. Besides that, it is just an amazing stock. It's high growth. It's growing at 25 to 30 percent per year. And some of you may know, but Brazil has gone through a little bit of a, a wobble macroeconomically. So when we bought this stock, it was very attractively valued for what you're getting from a growth perspective. So Mercado Libre is a stock that we really like in the portfolio. And then lastly, Nextera Energy and Nextera Energy Partners is sort of a classic renewable stock that we hold in the portfolio. It aligns to SDG 7, which is about clean energy, and SDG 13, which is climate change. Um, this stock, you know, it's the biggest renewable stock in the world. And as many of you know, particularly after the conflict in UK, um, Ukraine and Russia, the focus on renewables has gone way up. So we think that Nextera is going to be a major beneficiary of that. And more recently, Nextera Energy is a major beneficiary of the Inflation Reduction Act, the IRA, in the U.S., because Biden has realized that energy security is really important. And so a lot of these, the, the demand for renewables in the U.S. and around the world has gone up significantly. So these are some examples that you, um, you know, some of them you would expect to see in a sustainable portfolio, like Nextera Energy Partners. But Danaher, Mercado Libre, Advanced Drainage, these are some really unique ideas. And we think they're some of the best ideas in the world for companies of tomorrow. So let's move in, move on and talk a little bit about that 83% number, the number of people who think that there's a, a trade-off between um, how to invest sustainably and how to invest with, for performance. So you can see the blue circle on the, your left-hand side um, is talking about strong investment fundamentals. These are companies that are good investments. One example is McDonald's. We hold McDonald's in our core fund. McDonald's is a very solid, well-run company as you know, there's economic issues in the world that people start trading down and they want to buy a Big Mac, McDonald's performs very, very well. But it's not a good sustainability story. It doesn't align very good with SDG3. Obviously, eating Big Macs and fries and McFlurries is not particularly good for your health. A lot of people don't know this, but McDonald's is actually the fifth largest um, buyer of beef in the whole world. It buys more beef than like very large countries. And that's not good from a, from a climate change perspective. It also uses a lot of packaging. So amazing stock, absolutely rock solid fundamental investment case, but not a good sustainability story. So that's why it's on that right hand side in the blue circle. LVMH is another example. It's a very good stock. We love it from a financial perspective, but it's hard to make the case that buying $7,000 handbags is making the world a better place, especially when SDG 1 is about, in, is about no poverty and SDG 10 is about inequality. So very strong investment cases, but they're not going to go into our sustainable fund because the sustainable case isn't there. The more interesting part of this slide are the stocks that are on the left-hand side, Orsted, Rivian, and Natura. These stocks have amazing sustainability cases. And for someone who's very passionate about sustainable investing, like I, I am, it's easy to fall in love with these stocks because the sustainability case is so strong. So Orsted, as many of you know, is a Danish wind company. I just got back from Denmark a few months ago, and if you drive around in Denmark, there are wind farms stretching as far as the eye can see. If you drive over from Denmark to Sweden, the whole thing is like a big offshore wind farm. And Denmark, incidentally, produces 140% of its own energy needs just by wind. They produce more wind energy they can, than they can even use. So that's a really exciting, sustainable story. Orsted is, is the biggest wind um, utility in Denmark. But you know what? It's not a great financial story. <laughs> there are a lot of problems in the, in the way that things are priced. That sometimes the wind blows, sometimes the wind <laughs> doesn't blow. There's been delays in terms of getting the big turbine, turbines for the, um, for the wind farms, and there's, there's a lot of things that haven't gone, well for the, gone well for the stock, so it's down 70% since its peak. So that's a stock where, yeah, this is an amazing story, but do you want it in your portfolio? Probably not. You need to have that investment discipline to make sure that it's not just the sustainable stories that get into your portfolio, it's the, good, the stocks that have good sustainable uh, stories and also have strong investment fundamentals. Rivian is another example. Many of you may know Rivian. Um, it's, it's the Tesla of, of SUVs. I was recently in New York, and Rivian is now so desperate, they actually brought a bunch of their trucks into Times Square, and there were flocks of people trying to look at Rivians and get in and see them. They look really cool. Like, Google it after the presentation. No, Google it now, but Google it after the presentation. The, the product is cool. The sustainability story is rock solid. They're making EV SUVs. 
Um, but you know what, the stock is down 82% from the IPO. It has been an absolute flop. And just last week, they said that they're gonna have to recall almost all of their vehicles because there's a malfunction in one of their vehicles. So I, when I, I met with the founder and CEO in New York, and from a financial perspective, I said to him, I'm looking at your balance sheet, I'm looking at your cash flow, you're gonna run out of cash in six quarters, and this company's either gonna go bankrupt or you're gonna have to do a big capital raising, which is it? And so the point of that stock is, it was a stock that had so much hype. During the IPO, you couldn't even get a meeting with anybody at the stock, because there was so much hype. And you know, nine months later, it's down 82%, and they're in really big trouble. So another example of a fantastic story, but not backed up by the investment fundamentals. And then the last example is Natura. Some of you may know Natura, it owns the Body Shop, which was a leader um, even in like the 1990s in terms of uh, analyzing supply chains, making sure there's sustainable supply chains and having products that people wanted to buy. They own ASOC, which is another um, consumer products company, which is really a leader in terms of natural ingredients. And that all sounds good, right? But the stock's terrible, it's down 75%. It's listed in Brazil, which doesn't help it very much. But those are three examples of stocks which sound good, but once you do the analysis, you realize that they're not good investments. And so that, that middle part of the Venn diagram where the check check is, that's where we want to invest as Alfinity. Stocks that have very, very strong fundamentals and have good sustainability stories. And my, my working hypothesis, but I'm, I'm open to, to other views about why, you know, 83, 85% of, of millennials think that there's a trade-off is because way too many people just invest on the left-hand side. They just buy stocks that are good sustainable stories. And then of course you're gonna underperform because you know, they're, they're not strong fundamentals. So Alfinity, we are very, very disciplined about making sure that sustainability is a necessary condition for investing, but it's not a sufficient condition. Just because you have sustainability, that just means that you're gonna look more at the stock, not that it's gonna automatically get into the portfolio. So lastly, I just wanna say a few things about greenwashing, because this is a really, really important topic that is, um, you know, become very important for um, people who work in the industry and also people who are <laughs> investing directly in these kind of stocks. So what is greenwashing? There's two aspects to it. One is companies that say they have sustainable products and then they don't. And that's a risk that we have to take as investors. You need to make sure you're doing all the analysis to make sure that you, the stocks that you're investing actually are sustainable, not that you are just investing in stocks that have sort of made stuff up and greenwashed. Two examples that you may be aware of, one is Coke, when Coke came out with the, the Coke Green. And it, I mean, the, the photos looked amazing. It was this green bottle and the Coke was in a, a field with some yellow flowers and they said that there was stevia in it instead of sugar. But actually it was just Coke, which had some stevia in it. It was like not really a green product. And they ended up pulling it off the shelves very quickly because it was identified that that was potential greenwashing. Another example is H&M. So H&M had the H&M Conscious brand. Uh, which was supposed to be you know, not fast fashion, not going into landfills, made with more sustainable materials. And H&M um, is actually getting sued right now because people have figured out that H&M conscious is not actually that environmentally conscious. And so these are examples of greenwashing on the, on the product side or on the company side. But what's um, getting a lot of attention in Australia right now is greenwashing on the fund side. So if you're investing in a fund, is this fund saying we're investing sustainably and they're, they're not? So at Alfinity, we take a really, um, strict approach to what we're investing in. We want to make sure that every single thing that's in the portfolio has a strong and verifiable sustainable case and also has a very good investment case. So that's what that thing on the left hand side is, is about. It's about what's on the front of the tin is what's actually in the tin. So like I'm a vegetarian and I'm gluten free and if I buy something and it says vegetarian gluten free on the outside, that better be what's inside. And when you guys are looking at funds or stocks, um, I, I think that's a good way to look at it also. Is the stock, is what it says on the outside of the tin, is that's actually what's inside the company. If I'm investing in a fund, is what this fund says that they're doing, investing sustainably or for impact or in climate change, is that actually what they're doing in their portfolio? I think that will go a long way to, to addressing greenwashing. And then the last one is, um, it's supposed to represent have your green cake and eat it too. <laughs> and this is addressing the issue that some people think they're starting from the premise that just because I want to invest sustainably means I'm going to have to give up my performance. So let me make it very clear. I'm not saying that Alfinity is going to always outperform in our sustainable funds. Absolutely no way. We are trying our best to have disciplined um, you know, metrics and dif uh, a disciplined process and to make sure we can deliver the best returns for our, for our investors. But I think that starting from the you know, sustainable friends are going to, to underperform is not the right thing. I think you need to start from the, the basis saying that I don't want to align my personal value system with the way that I invest 
And on top of that, I'm going to have a very, very disciplined investment process that makes sure that I get the best investment outcomes and the best performance outcomes from the sustainable portfolio that I'm investing in. So to conclude, let's go back to our three questions. The first question was, do I care about sustainable investing? I'm hoping that the answer to that question is yes. And remember that $30 trillion and the 99% that I talked about at the beginning. That is a huge intergenerational transfer of wealth, and that is going to flow into some of the companies that I talked about today. Uh, the second question is, how do you define sustainability? Everybody is different, so I'm certainly not going to stand up here and tell you how you are going to define sustainability. The way that Alfinity does it is by aligning companies that we invest in to the sustainable development goals. And we think that, that taking that broad view of sustainability is very important because it allows you to have a diversified portfolio that will perform well in different environments. If you stick everything in climate change, and for example, there's a, a war in, in Europe, you know, that, that can be very bad. If you stick everything in healthcare and some, there's a pandemic, that can also be very bad or very good. But defining it very broadly to include social goals and environmental goals allows you to have a diversified portfolio that leads to better performance over time. And then the last question is, do you think there needs to be a trade-off between performance and sustainability? Our view is that if you approach sustainable investing with a disciplined investment process, the same you would as you would approach any investment process, and you apply that to a universe of sustainable stocks, you can lead to good outcomes over time. So I hope you've enjoyed the presentation. I look forward to speaking to all of you after, and enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you very much. I will say this about investing. Everything you do learn is cumulative. What I learned at 20 is useful.